Hello, my wonderful and lovely humans. So today we are going to be talking about meiosis. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, uh, the one thing I do want to tell you is that I am going to require that you guys color things in because uh, it is going to be extremely important that you guys follow these colors along here. Um, so you guys can see uh, like what the end products end up looking like. Um, and tomorrow you're going to find out just how detailed that ends up being. Okay. Uh, but I don't want to give too much away. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. And guess what, by the way, the King is around and yes, he will show up. So just be prepared. Just be prepared. I'm, I mean, there he is. There he is. All right. Anyways, let me go ahead and flip my camera. Okay. So you guys should all be looking at a page, you know, that's not colored in, but it should look something like this. Now I've gone ahead and done a little bit of movie magic and I colored my things in. Um, and again, I do expect you guys to color it in just like I did. Okay. So make sure you color these guys in. That is absolutely required. Um, but okay. But, uh, if you guys, uh, want to color a little bit more. Okay. Make it really pretty. So that way Miss Reyes is happy while she's grading. Right. I will give you extra credit. Okay. You guys know you do the work. I will give you points for it. Okay. All right. But anyways, we are going to go ahead and get started on this side because this side tells us the definition of meiosis and the definition of meiosis is that it is a, a form of cell division a form of cell division that is gonna end up producing these things called gametes, okay? So meiosis is a form of cell division that produces gametes. So what the heck even is a gamete? Well, if you guys look up here in the top left corner, you guys are gonna see what we call over here is an egg cell, Okay, this guy over here is an egg, and this dude over here is a sperm cell. Okay, and both of these things are what we call gametes. Okay, and uh, we will talk exactly about what a gamete is, but what you do need to know is that our egg and sperm cells are what they're, they're human gametes. Okay, that's what we call human gametes. All right, so now we're gonna go under here and we're gonna uh, describe the purpose of meiosis. So let me go ahead and bump that up. All righty. So uh, meiosis is going to play an important role in sexual reproduction, okay? Uh, as it produces gametes. And again, these gametes, they are also known as sex cells, okay? In males, they're going to produce what we call that sperm. And in females, it's going to end up producing those eggs. This is going to occur within the reproductive organs. Reproductive organs. These cells are gonna be different to normal body cells because they're going to have half, half the number of chromosomes. When we are referring to half the number of chromosomes, we call this the haploid. And that's with a P, haploid. All right, we call this the haploid number. And it is going to be uh, referred to with an N, okay? So technically this N, right? Remember in math, we never write the one in front of, uh, in front of a character, right? So just like that, we are not gonna write a one in front of here, but technically there is like an imaginary one that goes there. So this is referring to one N. Haploid, again, is half, 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 okay? Sounds really close. Um, but that is going to be referred to, or it's going to be symbolized by that N. Uh, when gametes fuse in the process of fertilization, okay, and what we mean by that, fusing together, uh, basically the sperm cell is going to enter the egg cell, and they join together, they get half each, right? They get, they, each of them provides half of the chromosomes. And when they have half and we multiply by two, what do we get? 
we're gonna get two N. Um, and that's actually what we call over here. So the resulting cell is going to be called a zygote. And this is important here. So go ahead and underline that. Uh, the resulting cell of fertilization. So once a sperm meets an egg uh, and fertilizes it, we're gonna get a zygote, okay? And this zygote is going to be diploid. So diploid, think dip or double, think dos, if you guys speak Spanish, okay? So diploid refers to 2N, okay? Because now we have two or dos or double, right? Double the half, got it? All righty, so we're gonna keep going down here uh, to the bottom of the page. As you guys can see, this is my terrible little fishy fish. Uh, but anyways, this is a, we're gonna call this dude, oh, Okay, Cheyenne's ready to go outside, goldfish. So this little dude over here is a goldfish, or at least that's what I intended him to be. Well, this goldfish, we need to figure out how many chromosomes this dude has, okay? And don't forget that I said with haploid, okay? So haploid, I'm just gonna make a note and I want you guys to make this note as well. Haploid, okay, is going to refer to half. Okay, haploid refers to half, and then we have diploid referring to double slash dos. Again, if you guys speak Spanish, okay? So double or dos. Uh, as you can see here, half even sounds like half, right? And dip or D, double or dos, okay? That is just, that's my thought process, I guess. Um, so I'm giving it to you guys. Anyways. Uh, so this goldfish, okay? Now I'm gonna start off by giving you guys the goldfish's haploid number, okay? So a goldfish's haploid number is going to be 25. So this goldfish, this goldfish's gametes are going to have 25 chromosomes, which means that this goldfish, this guy's cells, most of his cells besides his gametes are going to end up being diploid, okay? So I want you to figure out what this number would be if it was a diploid number, okay? So take some time, figure that out. Uh, over here, what we are supposed to have here is... Okay, so uh, this is not a panda bear. This is a mouse that Miss Reyes clearly did not do a very good job on. Okay, don't judge me. I am a biology teacher, not an art teacher, and that is with intention, okay? Anyways, so let's pretend he looks kind of like a squirrel maybe. Uh, but anyways, this little dude is going to be a mouse, okay? So with this mouse, I'm gonna do the opposite of what I gave you over here, okay? I'm gonna give you the diploid number. So this mouse is going to have 20, okay? And it's diploid number. So I want you guys to figure out what half or that haploid version is going to be. So I need you guys to fill in this first blank here and I'm gonna need you guys to fill in the second blank here, okay? Now, if you're having a little bit of trouble, this human right here, hey, that's what you guys are, a human. Uh, this human right here, if we look at the haploid number, we get 23. If we look at the diploid number, we have 46. Well, uh, oh, if you look over here, right? Remember there's that imaginary one over here. We have a two because it's not so imaginary, right? Uh, so all we did was we doubled this haploid number, okay? So what's three times, th or sorry, what's three plus three? That's gonna be six. And what is two plus two is gonna be four. So we would get 46, okay, if we added a second one. All right, that's all we did, okay? So if you guys need a little bit more time figuring out our goldfish and our mouse, go ahead and pause the video. All righty, so uh, now that we're back here, I'm gonna zoom out here just so you guys can get a good bird's eye view of what's going on. Now we just have filled out this whole left half. Now we're gonna start on the right half, okay? So this is gonna provide us with an overview of what meiosis looks like, okay? And meiosis is gonna be made up of a couple of different parts, but we're gonna go ahead and take it slow here, okay? Um, now, uh, I do want to uh, point out over here, let's go ahead and read this. Determine if each cell is diploid, that 2N, or haploid, that 1N. Write this in the little flag. So you guys see this little flag up here? All right, so we're going to track which stages of meiosis are going to be haploid and which ones are going to be diploid, okay? 
So let's start up here, uh, complete the labels for the processes. All right, so first of all, it's asking how many chromosomes are in the cell? Well, I count one, two, three, and four. So there are four chromosomes in this cell. Now, that's referring to chromosomes, okay? We also need to figure out the diploid. Well, if you guys look at these different colors, that is what I'm going to use to represent two of uh, the same genes, two variation of the same genes. Uh, so pretend we're coding for eye color, okay? So if, let's say my eye color would be pink or it would be green. I know that's crazy, but whatever. That's what we got here. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I contrasted the colors so you guys can see it very clearly. Anyways, uh, so we could have pink eye color or we could have green eye color. Now it's gonna depend on a, a whole bunch of different uh, factors here, but pink, pink, okay? Pink is gonna code for pink. So we're gonna call that uh, just one, okay? So this will be one and two, all right? And same thing with the green, but those are a little bit different. They're a different variation of that uh, eye color, right? So we're gonna go ahead and assign this a 2N number. Okay, so 2N means what? Two think dos or double, right? So we have diploid, okay? I'm just gonna make a note here, diploid. All right, diploid, you see two think two, or sorry, think dos or double, all right? Two, dos or double. Uh, but four chromosomes, all right, so. Once we get past here, what we are gonna start is at the very beginning of mitosis, okay? Uh, so what you guys are gonna find out is that meiosis follows suit with mitosis quite well. The difference is the end result. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna let you guys see for yourselves what happens here, but we gotta get there first, okay? Anyways, uh, so this is gonna go straight into our interphase. All right, our oh so famous interphase. And if you guys learn the hand dance, remember interphase is like this because my fingers are dancing because they're representing DNA. And in interphase, we can't really see that DNA very well because it is uncondensed, all right? But anyways, we're gonna go from interphase and this is what we're gonna end up. We're gonna multiply, we are going to multiply uh, the amount of DNA that we have because we want double. So that way we can have our cells, right? Uh, so we're going to go through interphase. We got, finally, we got replicated DNA. And now how many do we have? So remember what we did up here, right? We counted the colors. So how many different colors do you see? Well, something's clearly going on here, right? But we're not ready to get into that right now. Let's just get through meiosis and we will talk about what these different little colors mean. But the main idea here is that the main ones, right? The green and the green and the pink and the pink, there's still two of each, right? So this means that this guy is going to be diploid as well. All right, this guy is diploid as well. So what do we call two chromosomes that have the same genes? So again, these guys are gonna code for the same uh, type of eye color or whatever, or not the same type of eye color, but a different variation of eye color. What do we call it when we have two chromosomes with the same genes? We call that homologous, homologous. Homologous, all right? And if this brings you back to thinking about homozygous, all right? Remember, homozygous means same, right? So we're talking about the same, okay? The, they're coding for the same trait, but they're coding a different variation on that trait, right? We can either have green eyes or we can have pink eyes. Does that make sense? All right, so once we go through interphase and we have uh, replicated our DNA, we are gonna go ahead and go straight into our first uh, meiosis phase. So this is known as meiosis stage one. And that stage one is referred to with a Roman numeral here. And that just looks like a big eye, okay? So we are now in meiosis number one and what we do here, okay, just like in metaphase, or sorry, not metaphase, mitosis, just like in mitosis, we end up with two cells, okay? Now this is where it's gonna eventually begin to stray away from mitosis and look a lot more like meiosis, but we'll get there. Uh, now meiosis one, okay, now we have just one of these pink ones, just one of these green ones. So what do you guys think it's gonna be? 
Is it going to be 2N or is it going to be chest N? All right. If you guys said chest 1N, you are absolutely correct. And what do we call that 1N? I hope you guys said haploid. You know, I believe in you. I believe that you guys said haploid. So this is going to be a haploid. All right. And same thing over here, haploid. All right. 1N means haploid, 2N means diploid. Diploid, think double. Haploid, think half, okay? Half of double, all right? But as you guys can see, we only have one of each color now. So up here, we had two of each color. Now we have one of each color, all right? So uh, these are two brand new cells, right? Uh, they have gone undergone the uh, mitosis stage, and there's a little bit of details in that. We'll get into it. Uh, but anyways, we've gone through mitosis and we've ended up with two uh, different cells, okay? So we are now ready to begin the second meiosis step. So this one down here, like meiosis one is now going to be known as meiosis two, also written with a numeral, or sorry, a Roman numeral, okay? So meiosis one, meiosis two. Now, if you guys look at what the result of meiosis two is, we have one, two, three, four different cells, okay? We have four different cells here. And if you guys look at where these ended up, now this is gonna require that you look closely at the colors here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can really see what I'm talking about. All right, so if we look at our haploid, if we look at the pink side up here, the bigger chromosome versus the little one, we see that this was mostly pink, this one's mostly green, right? But they've had a little bit of uh, sharing information, okay? And we'll get into that tomorrow, don't worry. Uh, but they've had a little bit of sharing information. They're still, for the most part, pink and green, okay? So if we like literally take our pen or our pencil, or I hope you're writing with a pencil, and we kind of split this chromosome in half, if you guys track this pink, oops, I think I switched it up. Oop, oop. Anyways, uh, that's an oopsie. Uh, <laughs> awkward. Uh, so this should be a big pink one and this should be a little green one, okay? So these colors, I switched it up. Doesn't this look like a little bit like Pickle Rick? Okay, let's be. Anyways, uh, so. Yes, I definitely switched the colors up and this is what I'm talking about, guys. Make sure you're keeping these colors straight, okay? Make sure you keep the colors straight because you don't wanna end up like Miss Reyes with egg on her face, right? Uh, anyways, so this should have been entirely pink. And if you look at the little one, right? We do the same thing, we split this guy up, okay? If we track it, this should have been green with a little pink stain on it. Does that make sense? Over here, we did do this one correctly at least, okay? Our big one is pink with some green stains on it. And our little one is just that full green color on the right side here. Does that make sense? All right. Well, again, Miss Riz, maybe, no, wait, did I get this one right? Oh my gosh, I have two green ones. Oh no, okay. Well, I messed this guy up, that's for sure. But this guy's right. Uh, if we go ahead and imagine that we split this guy in half, right? This little one over here should have been pink. That was my bad. Should have been pink. All right. So let's go ahead. You know what? Let me just make that little sign up there. This guy should have been pink and this guy should have been pink and this guy should have been green. I don't know. That's probably going to get confusing later, but that's, uh, oh, well, I'm out of paper, so. We're going to have to deal. My bad, y'all. Okay, but that's this big guy was correct. This other big guy is correct. Okay, anyways, just making sure. Sorry, and then Cheyenne's like begging me to go outside. All right. Uh, okay, so if we look at how this is split up, right, this should have been an entirely pink uh, chromosome, okay? And over here, this one is going to go to the right, pink with a little green stain on it, okay? If we split this in half, we should have a green one with some pink stains, which is what exactly what we've got. And over here, we have a green one with just green, right? Okay. Now, we have halved our haploids, okay? But remember, this is still just one chromosome, okay? We've just doubled our chromosome. So we're going to have that. And all we've done is split it up the, the duplicated uh, chromosomes or DNA, okay? 
Uh, so what we result with is not just two cells, okay, but we result in four cells total. And this is the main difference between meiosis and mitosis, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here a little bit so you guys can get a good full view of what this page is supposed to look like. Now, please, please, please remember that I messed up here and then I messed up here, okay? So mm -hmm. don't copy me literally color for color, right? Make sure that you guys get it straight, okay? So I'm going to let Diane out and you guys pause the video if you need to. All righty, we are back and I think we were ready to go on to the second page. So flippity flip and upside down, whoops, daisy. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a real good look here. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that we've got some arrows, okay? I've gone ahead and added some arrows. So make sure you take a quick second to add those arrows, okay? Also, same thing with the coloring, okay? It is gonna be important that you guys keep those colors straight, okay? So make sure you're paying attention. Don't make a mistake like Ms. Reyes did, okay? Don't do it, it's not fun. Cause then you gotta redo the whole thing all over again. And there's a lot of little coloring details. Anyways, don't be like Ms. Reyes, take your time. Make sure you get these colors straight, okay? and make sure you get these arrows too, okay? Do not forget about these arrows. If you guys look, there's some dotted lines here. It splits up the different phrases here, okay? But it's going to refer to either meiosis one on the left or meiosis two on the right, okay? So again, just make sure that you are keeping those two straight, the, the arrows, all right? So pause the video if you need to, get the arrows drawn. Lonely. All right. Okay. So I think we're ready to move on now. Uh, you guys should have had enough time to pause the video and write down your arrows. If not, well, back it up. No biggie, right? This is YouTube. You guys know how this works. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Now it tells us to color these in, but honestly, you guys don't have highlighters. So it's kind of hard to like keep track of that if you don't have highlighters. So we're going to uh, follow the arrows instead. Okay. It's just, this is going to be easier. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in a little bit so that we can read and look and see together. Okay. So in each mitotic division, the cell is going to go through PMAP, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We write a number after the phrase to show which division it is in, okay? So it's either going to be prophase one, which is referred to as P1, or it's going to be prophase two, which is referred to as P2, okay? And that's just referring to which portion of the division it is in. Is it in meiosis one or is it in meiosis two, okay? So P1 or P2, M1 or M2, that's for metaphase, okay? Uh, some events happen in both divisions. For example, the chromosomes condense in both, sorry, in both prophase one and prophase two, but some events are going to be unique. They want us to complete the key and fill in the gaps to show each phase of mitosis, okay? So again, you guys should have already done the work with the arrows, which means that as we're filling this out, we can keep it pretty, uh, pretty straight about what is happening and where. All right, so this first portion is going to occur on both ends. It's gonna occur both in P1 and P2 or prophase one and prophase two, okay? So here's what's going on in prophase one and prophase two. All right, so our nuclear envelope, our nuclear, blah, blah, blah. our nuclear envelope is going to break down. And you guys can see that over here. It's breaking down, breaking down, breaking down, right? Uh, the central pair is also called a what? I think you guys should know this one. I hope you guys, centrosome, you guys said centrosome. It's been a long day. Centrosome. All right. Uh, also called a centrosome, are going to start to move to the opposite poles, okay? And when you guys think poles, think like North Pole, right? That's where Santa lives. Oh my gosh, Santa. So Santa would probably be up here on the North Pole of the cell and, San or sorry, the South Pole or penguins 
right? They'd probably be down here in the South Pole. All right, so that's what we're talking about. We're just talking about opposite ends, okay? Uh, so with this guy, we're moving left and right instead of top and bottom, okay? Uh, but poles think North Pole, South Pole. The chromosomes are going to condense and they're going to become visible. So that happens in both P1 and in P2. Now this second portion down here, okay, is only going to be uh, occurring in P1, okay? So what's gonna happen during P1 is that we are gonna have some crossing over, okay? And that's gonna occur between the homologous. That's gonna occur between the homologous chromosomes. So. If you guys look at this picture pretty closely here, you guys will see that this green uh, version, <clears throat> this green version of the eye color trait, right, is going to basically stain or it's going gonna, it's gonna to trade some information, okay? It's going to trade a little bit of information with the pink version of this trait, okay? And that is what we refer to with crossing over. Now, tomorrow we are gonna go into really good detail about what crossing over means, okay? So don't get caught up on it. Just know that when we do this crossing over, we end up with a little bit of pink information in our green, and we end up with a little bit of green information in our pink, okay? All right, so once again, that was prophase. And after P, we have M for metaphase or M for what? M4 middle. And since we did that for metaphase, let's do it for prophase. Prophase was P4 pause and condense, right? Okay. But anyways, that was our hand dance. I uh, hope you guys remember. I think it's super handy. Ha! Ha! I just, I just, I, I not intended. Okay. But it was beautiful. It was great. It was wonderful. I think I deserve a Grammy, an award. Feel free to make me one. Or you could just get my manatee back. Anyways, uh, so in metaphase, now this first statement is going to refer only to my, uh, sorry, metaphase one, okay? So this first uh, meiosis phase. So what is uh, formed completely? The spindle. All right, and remember, these spindles are these little uh, like strings that are attaching like fishing lines, okay? They're fishing lines that are attaching to our chromosomes, okay? And they've got a very special job here and we'll, we'll hear about it in a second. But the spindle has formed completely. Now, again, actually, I think I screwed up. So if you guys look at these arrows, they're gonna occur on both ends. So we're gonna have that happen over here in M1 and we're gonna have it happen over here in M2. Now, the second one is characteristic of only M1, right? There's no other arrow here. Okay, we're good, we're good. Ms. Reyes is back on straight. Okay, uh, so what's gonna happen over here is our homologous, our homologous pairs of chromosomes are gonna line up in the M for metaphase or M for middle, middle. They're gonna line up in the middle of the cell. So as you can see here, we're lined up pretty pretty much here in the middle. Now this looks a lot different from what our hands show, but you know, keep it, this is a cartoon version, okay? All right. Uh, I think personally our hand version looks a lot more like a real cell. And if you guys remember back to the onion root lab, uh, that is what a real cell looks like, right? So anyways, not, not to toot my own horn, uh, now, this last statement is going to refer to M2 only. So what happens in M2 is that the chromosomes our chromosomes are going to line up in the middle of the cell. So how is that different from this? Well, over here, what we have are homologous pairs, right? And we said that homologous pairs were referring to pink and pink and then green and green, right? Okay, well over here, right? We've got homologous pairs. Over here, we don't have that. We don't have a pair, right? We don't have pink and pink. We just have pink and green, okay? So they are no longer a homologous pair. That is the main difference between M1 and M2. In M1, we have a homologous pair. In M2, we do not. 
All righty. So after M for metaphase or M for middle, we go to A for anaphase or A for. Oh, you guys are so good at this. A for apart. Okay. Because what happens to our DNA? Well, it starts to move apart to the opposite ends. All right. So uh, this first statement is going to refer to both here. So what's happening here is our spindle fibers are going to contract. So remember that I call these guys like uh, the spindle fibers. I called them like fishing line. Okay, well, guess what? We've caught our fish. Now we want to reel it back in. And we are the centrioles over here. Okay, we are trying to get that fish back to us. Okay, so we are going to start to pull that line back in. We're going to reel it in, right? Bring in that fish. Uh, the second statement is going to refer to anaphase one, not anaphase two. Okay, so just anaphase one, no ear over here. The homologous chromosomes are going to get separated. They're going to get separated as they are pulled by their centromeres. And to the opposite poles, okay? So we're moving uh, the centromere is that little button in the middle, right? You guys can barely see it on mine, but I'm sure you guys can see it on yours. Uh, it's the little button in the middle that these spindle fibers are attaching to. It's like the safe uh, button that we can pull on. We can grab from there and we can pull them to, uh, to our opposite ends where we want them to be uh, without damaging the very, very special and very, very important information that is contained within these chromosomes, right? So that centromere is where we can grab without damaging. Uh, but what's happening over here is that we've got a pair. Now let's talk about what happens over here in anaphase two. So again, this is different from what happens in anaphase one. So what happens over here in anaphase two is that our sister chromatids, whoops, sister chromatids are going to get separated as they are. Okay. And same, I'm not sure. Oh, basically same as up here. Okay. The main difference, remember, is that we have homologous chromosomes. So as you guys can see, we have double uh, or we have replicated versions of our chromosomes. Over here, we do not, okay? We've already split. So actually, technically, we split into two cells. Uh, but anyways, the main difference is that over here, we are replicated. Over here, we are definitely not. All right. The one thing I do want to point out is that these spindle fibers in both are still pulling uh, their fish or their chromosome to back to them, back to safety, right? Back to uh, where we can grill them. Actually, fish are friends, not food. Okay. Anyways. Um, all right. So I think we are ready to move on to telophase. So T for telophase or T for two, T for two. Now, uh, my T for two kind of in a way almost, it still works technically because here we have one cell that's going to be splitting into two. But remember, the whole end product of meiosis is to get four cells, okay? The end process of mitosis is to get two cells, all right? So this would have basically kind of been mitosis over here. This is meiosis. But again, remember, because we're talking about meiosis, this is meiosis one. This is meiosis too, okay? Uh, but like I said, the process is very similar to mitosis, okay? Uh, so this whole statement is gonna apply to both sides here. So what happens is that a nuclear envelope, okay, a nuclear envelope is going to begin to form around the groups of chromosomes. So once we have isolated our chromosomes to where we want them to be in a new cell, uh, we are going to go ahead and secure them back into an envelope. Uh, if you guys think back to our prophase stage, we actually got rid of that envelope, right? We needed to expose them so that we could do the work of replicating them and crossing over and all this good stuff, right? Um, but now we need to package them again so that they can be safe. So our chromosomes are going to start to do what? What did, where did we go from here? They're going to start to unravel or decondense. All right. And basically telophase uh, ends in 
two cells, right? That's why we call it two. But now we have basically restarted the cycle and the beginning of the cycle, which we didn't actually write in here was interphase. So these two cells are now in the stage of interphase, right? Okay, now remember the one guys with cytokinesis, cytokinesis is technically not its own stage. It just refers to these two physically different versions, okay? It technically falls under telophase, so cytokinesis is technically not its own phase. It's just called this for, I don't know why exactly, but cytokinesis is technically a part of telophase, okay? Do not forget that. Uh, the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm, so again, think of the cytoplasm as like that jelly stuff that kind of fills the cell, all right? It holds on to the chromosomes. It kind of keeps them in the right place where we want them to be. Um, so the cytoplasm will physically divide and it's gonna split each cell into two cells. The cell will now be in the interphase, interphase stage of the cell cycle. And again, this is occurring on both ends here. So we have interphase and these guys, well, clearly they haven't decondensed again into interphase, but uh, same idea, okay? So cytokinesis, we have physically split up our DNA. Actually, they made a little note over here that says, uh, notice that chromosomes would have decondensed, right? So just like I was saying, okay? Technically the image depicted here is not 100% accurate, but all right, I do want to zoom out a little bit and take a bird's eye view image of this whole thing. Uh, if you guys need to, you can pause it and copy everything down, but I do want to run through everything. So uh, over here in mitosis, or sorry, meiosis one, we end up with two cells. Once we go undergo a second cell division, so these two cells, remember, they're going to recondense into prophase. So down here, they're in interphase, they recondense into prophase, start that cycle back up and uh, now they're condensed again, okay? But the difference is, is that now we have two cells that we're doing that with. Those two cells eventually are gonna go through the process and the two cells are gonna divide and now we're gonna have four cells and that's why we end up with four gametes, okay? Now, uh, now I wanna look at the actual colors of everything, okay? So uh, if we remember how we kind of like split up, so basically uh, what we had here, so we have, pink and we have green, if we go ahead and draw that imaginary line down the middle uh, and we see where, how that gets split up. So again, the centromere is like that button, that safety button, right? That we can pull safely to the opposite poles. Um, so if we pull it apart, we'll see that we get an entirely pink version. And over here, we get a, a pink and stained with green, right? Down here, if we split up our smaller chromosome, Okay, on the left side, we will have a green version that is a little bit stained with pink, which is what we have here. And on the right side, we should have a green version, just a pure green version, okay? Now, once we split those into two, that's what our cells should end up with. So again, uh, what we're gonna have over here should have been that pink with green stains. That's what we got here. And over here on the right, we should have had that green version, uh, just the entirely green version, right? If we look at the left side, we should have an entirely pink version and we should have that uh, green stained with pink version, okay? And I realize it's a little hard to see with me zoomed out, but hopefully you guys have followed. Uh, same thing should be happening over here on this side, but I'm not gonna go through it again because this video is already long enough and I'm sure you guys are tired. So um, that's kind of all I got for you, okay? So once again, quick review, very similar to mitosis. There's just two times that we divide, okay? And meiosis results in gametes, all right? And gametes are super important because we wouldn't be who we are without gametes. And as you guys can see, every single version of this gamete is entirely different. So not only do we have a very different version for our sperm, we're gonna have very different versions for our, um, or egg cells too, okay? They divide similarly. They just, they're different shape because somebody different produces them, okay? 
Uh, but we have four entirely brand new, it uh, doesn't look like their brother or sister, different variations, right? And when we pair that with our egg cells, as you guys can imagine, we end up with completely different brothers and sisters, okay? So if you guys do not look like your brothers and sisters, unless you guys are a twin, which technically you'd be like a clone, um, then you guys are the result of this meiosis too, okay? All right, so that is all I have for you guys. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Miss Reyes, okay? Hi, Miss Reyes. Bye, Miss Reyes, and the entire class. And King seems very upset. I think he's ready for bed. So am I. All right. Well, anyways, have a great day, guys. Bye.